now that I want to start working with this uh, sound file, once again I want to get a better look at things. So when you're in the timeline view, you can hit this plus and minus button to basically expand your work area. It doesn't affect the artwork, it doesn't affect the timing, it just makes this a little bit easier to see. And now, you've heard that I can scrub through the timeline here so that I can figure out what's going on with the sound. So scrubbing sounds like this. All the kids are going... So you can go backwards and forwards so that at least you can tell what's going on so that you can match your track to your artwork. But this isn't automatically enabled, this scrubbing feature. So what you have to do to enable that is go up to sound and sound scrubbing. Make sure that's checked off. And now as you move this, you'll find that you can scrub through the sound with no problem at all. Also, you may want to break up this track into separate parts so that you can move it and uh, manipulate it. So to clip or shorten or manipulate those sounds, you can, for example, split this audio sequence at the current frame. And when I do that now, my voice tracks are separate and I can manipulate them a lot easier. Now that I've been able to split this into one or more pieces, I also want to show you how you can trim the uh, the edges, the beginning and end of any of your short sequences, the same in a similar way to the way that we shortened and lengthened uh, the panels. But if you get nor near the end of either the beginning or the ending of the clip, you'll see that cursor appears and you can simply drag it to clip off however much of the beginning that you want. And if you want to clip off the ending, you can do the same thing. Wait till that cursor appears and drag it inward. And that's why especially you'll want to be seeing the waveform so that you can do that easily to see what you're doing. Again, to see the waveform, you go to sound and show waveform without that it's a little bit hard to tell what you're doing. Now, if you want to make a cut in the middle, again, you just have to slice it in two. You don't have to go to sound and split sequence at the current frame. And now you'll have separate pieces that you can get at. And if they're a little hard to get to, you can just hit that plus sign. So you can zoom in basically on your timeline to have much more control over it and then I would be able to trim that back however I want to. You could control the volume of a track within each individual clip if you want to by going up to sound and show volume envelope and then what we have here is this little blue bar and any place that you tap you're going to basically create a marker so I'm going to tap here at the beginning to marker where I can drag this way down, for example, if I wanted the volume at the beginning to be very low. And then if I want the volume to rise up, at this point I can make it louder and then continue at this higher level of volume, which is pretty much full volume. And then if I want it to dip right here, for example, for some reason, I'll just tap on that timeline and pull that down. Now that may be too gradual of a slope so I can add another uh, spot there and just have it dip for a short while. Again, if I want it to come back up, I press again, get a new keyframe, sort of a keyframe, and then it continues on. And then if I want it to taper off from here to the ending, I could tap here to create a new spot and then tap at the end to drag this down to uh, zero volume. I've gone ahead and changed the volume envelope markers up and down in a ridiculous fashion on these two clips just to give an exaggerated view of what it can look like as you change those volume levels. So I'm just going to give those a playthrough very quickly. I'm sorry, sweetie. You can't go to Mars until you clean up that. So obviously you in real life want to use those in a more subtle fashion for fade-ins and for fade-outs and for putting particular volume or emphasis on a 
particular part of your soundtrack, but it can be very, very helpful when you want to manipulate your sound within your animatic.